boxing. All right, so this is the Crate Club box that you see here in front of me. I'll unbox it in a second. If you guys don't know what it is, I'll tell you what it is. It's uh, I'm on here on their website right now. I've got to pull it up. It's called the they call it the Tactical Survival Box Built by Professionals. So funny when that when I hear that phrase Tactical Survival Box built by professionals, it occurs to me, or what I, what I think about is a professional is really anybody that gets paid to do something, right? So if you're paid to pack the box, then you're a professional box packer. So um, they did send me the review because of my professional experience and what I do for a living in my business, obviously. Um, I do a lot of reviews on subject matter in the tactical and survival fields. I design and produce equipment and in the tactical field and of a tactical nature. So uh, I think it's going to be very interesting for me to be able to share my thoughts on this. I am opening it live on camera, so you're going to see my live reaction uh, to the stuff that's inside. And there's, just to give you a, like a little bit of a rundown, on, they have like some different levels. They have three tiers. The smallest level is called the lieutenant, then there's the captain, which is the middle one, and this is, this is actually the general. So this is $400 four times a year. So it's, this is $1,400 a year and you get four of these a year. So that's, to me, that's incredibly expensive unless it's good stuff in the box and it's really cheap. So like looking at it, I, I couldn't even tell you because I have bug out bag videos here on the channel where the bug out, where it's, you know, 10 grand for the, just the bag and what's in, in the contents. And I feel like the $300 is like the lowest you can get for like a true bug out bag. And, and the only one that I'm aware of offering that is bone tactical. So I don't think the price is out of, out of the question or too crazy or too high or anything like that. Uh, so that's all I know about it right now. They say that it's built by professionals or put together by professionals. Um, we, I'll be able to tell you in a second, what type of professionals putting it together. So here we go. Okay. Uh, we have a lot of little goodies in here. It looks like, and, uh, definitely some fad stuff. So <laughs> the, um, the key smart has been making its rounds. We'll, we'll start with that. This is the key smart. Uh, it's a brass door opener supposedly and bronze and brass because of the coronavirus, they do not, it doesn't uh, hold like, you know, microbial, it doesn't have a, a micro, mi microbial signature, basically germs and stuff from the best we can understand don't really, are not able to live and survive on this and it doesn't transfer, let's say a virus like the coronavirus. Let me, uh, let me cut through the BS now and, and let's talk about a little bit of truth. So the truth about this is that even if it doesn't breed or allow to, anything bad to live on it, how possible is it for you to use this thing to open things all the time and then it doesn't have anything on it that's going to kill a virus or bacteria. It just isn't naturally native to breeding them. It's not a, it's not a Petri dish, let's say. So at that point that you're sticking this thing in and out of your pocket, at what point is it actually useful for opening stuff? Really at no point. You could just wear some gloves if you really wanted to get to do that. Bring, you know, latex gloves, something like that would be probably your best bet. I think what they're trying to do is have it as like some sort of a self-defense tool maybe, but I don't see any way that you can hold it where it would be useful as a self-defense tool. And just so you guys know, I do happen to make a lot of very similar products. <laughs> so we'll just grab one of mine off the board here. Well, I got some that are handmade and some that are actually CNC made. So I'll show you the difference between this guy, which looks like it's made probably laser cut. And then it looks like somebody 
it runs over the top of it with a angle grinder probably and a, maybe like a 120 disc. The edges are not chamfered and maybe a flap disc and that's about it. It's very thin in comparison and it's very unfinished in comparison to some of my tools. I do like that it's bronze. I think that's a great thing. The jimping actually looks pretty good so that I think they probably add in the jimping maybe after the fact CNC or something like that and it's weird because it has so the outer finish here looks like it's stonewashed or tumbled but then almost as like an afterthought it looks like they passed over the two sides of it here with a with a flap disc maybe like a 120 grit flap disc or actually everything's in in a in a in a in the same line so what they did was they ground this down with a, a, a basically sandpaper, a tool that that a magnet holds it and the tool passes over the top like this and levels it. So that's how they did the sides and then <laughs> the it was tumbled around the outside. We, the, you can see the difference. I don't know if you want to zoom in on these so I can show you the difference. This is kind of what something sized well to for self-defense looks like and this is also what a stonewashed finish looks like when the entire tool is stonewashed what you want to look for as far as tools that you want to carry every day you see these sharp edges on here they're just uncomfortable and they get caught on everything you want to kind of look and see and make sure that whether it's handmade right obviously this is probably cheaper than my stuff so you're not going to get anything handmade for a cheap price but this is cnc made here so you can see this one has actually the chamfer there that's done in on cnc so it is definitely possible to do the chamfer on cnc as well but let's just keep going on and and see if there's i did see some some cool things in the box as well some things that are a little i would recommend a little more i guess part of the fun part of this crate club is that you'd never know what you're going to get if i was going to be getting stuff like that crap though i would be upset so hopefully, like I said, Olite, I, you guys know I work with Olite. They send me stuff to do reviews on as well. Uh, I, I actually, I believe that they sent me one of these and I had it forwarded to a different address and it's kind of cool. So Olite, you're getting your review also. <laughs> um, this is pretty cool. Mini Valkyrie 2, little pistol light. Olite does a good job. They're cheap for sure, but they do a good job. They're, they're quality, cheap lights. I've never really had a problem. I've heard mixed reviews from other people, but uh, I've never personally had a problem. Let's see, this looks like, if I had to guess, I would say that it's a, a hammock. It's got the Crate Club mark markings on it, and I've done emo, Eno, excuse me, Eno hammocks a lot, so it looks like a hammock made out of an old military surplus parachute which they work great they're cool and they're cheap so that's cool and these you know if you're uh if you're in a tropical environment somewhere where it's not too cold and this is a hammock then it's uh it's pretty great to throw in there let's see we've got bastion let's see what this is Okay, this is a uh, very cheap looking knife. <laughs> not, uh, not something I would be thrilled to get. But the, the lockup isn't bad. Not too bad. It's a pretty decent folder. It might be ball bearing. It's, it opens well definitely opens well it's it's got a very crude finish but this is coming from a, a a knife maker who makes my stuff by hand so when I see a lot of machine imperfections it's uh, it bothers me but I guess it's pretty sharp it's d2 steel so if it's properly heat treated you know then it's a good steel uh, d2 steel is a good steel I do like it a lot but uh, it's, it's hard to say. It's hard to say if you don't know if they do their own heat treating. It, it, the design is good. It's actually a well-designed knife. And 
surprisingly doesn't look so bad. So it, it looks a little cheap, and I'll show you why I said it looks cheap, but I, I'm actually, it's, it's not so bad. The reason I said it looks cheap is just because this, is, this inlay here is just very unfinished carbon fiber inlay, and these, these chamfer lines here are just kind of almost a rush job, right? But it looks good in the fact that they have the chamfer on there. So there's, you can get a lot of these knives that don't have this on here. Something else I noticed was this looks like a powder coat, but it looks, it's kind of a, it's like a little shiny slash matte, like the way that it was cured. I'm not sure that if it was supposed to be a satin finish or parts of it are satin, parts of it are matte. So it's kind of a, I, I would say for a production knife, you know, if this costs maybe $20, $25, I would say that this would be maybe $20, $30, bucks, that this would be a no problem. No problem. I would not be upset that I invested in this for that price. So we're, we're looking so far at a, a box that's uh, $300, what do we say, $300 box, $400 box. Uh, looking at so far, I would say... Maybe 40 bucks so far, 50 bucks. Let's say 50. Let's give them the benefit of the doubt and say 50 bucks. Leatherman, Leatherman is a, is a very popular brand of multi-tool. And as a matter of fact, I have a few Leathermans and I like to carry them. So this is, uh, this is impressive. They're not the best multi-tool by any means, but they're a respected name in the brand and they work well. I, I've had, uh, I've had issues with them, but one of the things that I like about Leatherman is that their designs are pretty great. And one of the things that I don't mind about having, so that you can tell it's, 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 everything's, it's not uh, smooth or polished. It's, everything's kind of rough. It's kind of, it doesn't open incredibly easy, but there's a break-in period, I'm sure, with it. It's kind of uh, like machine marks all over, crude, unfinished parts. But the thing about it is, is it works. And the difference between, you know, if, if you're not carrying this to be, have something that's the Rolex of multi-tools, if you're just carrying something cheap, then there's nothing wrong with something like this. This one has a cool little carabiner on the back. And the, the biggest problem I had on my Leathermans was like oxidation. But then I, uh, what I'll do is, and I never really thought of a tool as something that you, at first, when I was first carrying them, as uh, something you would need to oil. But uh, a recommendation is if you carry a Leatherman, treat it like you would a knife. Even though it's got pliers and stuff on there and screwdrivers and, and, and all kinds of moving parts like that, it's, I would still recommend, even these little screwdrivers in here, they'll get rusted in these little, in these little areas here. And I feel like if you just, these pop out and they stick in as screwdrivers, and these are really like, very difficult to use and they 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 love to strip screws when you use them but it is kind of it is great to have if you don't have anything else one of the reasons that i include a full size screwdriver in the in my multi tools is for that reason because these thin line they're almost it would they're only good for an emergency i would say if i wanted to like i've had to use on my camera equipment when i was doing a YouTube video in Italy one time. I, br I bring this up all the time. My, the camera came out of the, out of the chassis that was held in so I could have a gimbal for it. And if I would have had to use this, I would have probably ruined the screws that were in my camera chassis. So that's one thing to consider. But uh, I, I do think that, you know, there's a lot of guys that are probably gonna like this. I think the guy that's gonna like this, this Leatherman tool, and this actually looks a little bit Cheaper than, than the last Leatherman. I have a mutt that I that I keep, the Leatherman mutt, and this this does not look. This is the Skeletool CX. This does not look as quality as my mutt, and this doesn't really have very much on it in comparison either. But it's Leatherman name brand, and like I said, I think most of the guys that are going to be carrying a Leatherman at this low quality, uh, like entry level Leatherman, they're they're probably never going to use it. They're probably just going to either buy it and stick it somewhere or have it to have it. So I would say, 
I would put this here at value maybe 70 bucks of what we've got going here. So um, let's keep going. So this is all trash. Me, uh, I saw I saw the Gerber name brand in here, and uh, Gerber is probably they make probably the worst knives in out of any American knife company. Um, they used to actually make decent knives, and something happened where they just started making junk. So very poor heat treat not even sharp this knife is not even work sharp i mean i'm just yeah that's embarrassing <laughs> so when i see gerber and hear gerber i just i don't you know i don't even want to i won't even bother i don't even bother they actually approached me a few years back about possibly working with them on a tomahawk design that they were bringing out before they brought out one of their now currently really popular tomahawk designs and I, I couldn't do it. <laughs> I can't work with people who, who make junk. But um, let's see what else we got in here. Dang, dang, Dango? Dango. Special edition. I have not heard of Dango. Well, this looks kind of cool. Huh. Oh, this little wallet. Little EDC wallet. Ooh, this looks really cool, actually. That is cool. It's got like a, it's got like a rubber band on there, and oh yeah, that's kind of cool. I wonder how long that rubber band would last, though. Mm -hmm. It's very similar to to the wallets that I make. And so, uh, so it's very similar to the Bone Tactical Minimalist wallet. Just a little bit bigger. I actually have one in my pocket. Uh, no, I you can grab one if you want. Do a little compare and contrast here to the Bone Tactical wallet to the Django wallet. It, uh, it looks cool. I definitely, this has probably the uh, the look factor. So this is the, this is the Bone Tactical wallet here. Um, and then the Django wallet. So we'll show, kind of show them next to each other here. A uh, little compare and contrast. I do like the size with the Bone Tactical one uh, is a little bit better. And the, it's a little smoother. Because this has some sharp edges on it, which I don't know why. It's pretty, it's actually kind of sharp right here. Um, I noticed when I was flipping it around in my hand. So... They're pretty similar. I, it does have this rubber band on here, which I don't feel like would last forever, but I don't think it's, it's probably not just gonna, it's like a wristband and I wear one. And this wristband that I have here has broken once every, I have several of them. I just replace it when it breaks. It's uh, it's from a church in, in, in Alabama that I attend anymore very, very rarely, but it says pray first, just a cool little band that I like to wear. Um, Great Highlands, uh, Highlands Baptist, Highland Baptist is the name of it for church. And, and, uh, I actually watched, they have a, on, they have a app you can download and I watch the, I watch the messages online <laughs> a lot pretty frequently. So I still keep up with them. I just haven't had a chance to attend in a long time, but, uh, yeah, this is, this is pretty cool. I, I really feel, so I'm getting a judge, you know, looking through this of, uh, what kind of people, would benefit from this you know you guys being my subs subscribers i'm gonna i'm gonna you know give the best review that i can and recommend to you guys you know whether you would want this or not who would who kind of who would want this as far as what what type of person i guess would uh would want to be using or purchasing this this system because what this is is it's like a it's a random mail order system that you can get you know different stuff in the mail so i'm looking you know right now i think we're about probably what i would put to be worth maybe a hundred bucks over here and this is a four hundred dollar box so uh there you know there's a little bit of a discrepancy there 
I do, uh, I have a lot of videos on backpacks as well. And what I always, always, always recommend is don't get a backpack with molly all over the outside of it because it's gonna, it's gonna just make you look over the top tactical. So this is the <laughs> backpack that I always tell people not to get. Uh, this is the style here, just because it's, there's really no reason to, to draw attention to yourself. And especially if you're trying to like, look, go under the radar, so to speak. Um, then this actually has a metal frame on it. I haven't seen a backpack with a metal frame on it since I think my dad had a Boy Scout backpack uh, that I used to carry when I was a kid. And so it's, it's like 45 years old. And uh, it was 30 years old when he gave it to me and I carried it 30 years ago. So that's the last time I've seen a metal frame on a backpack. But that's interesting. Um, it's definitely not, uh, not something I would carry, um, but uh, it has a snake on it. So if you like to wear dragon shirts, then you can have the matching snake backpack. <laughs> That's kind of like what I feel about this backpack. But so, okay. So in all, in all fairness, I really do feel like there's some people that would really like this, this crate club. One is if you don't mind, uh, if you're financially, if you have financial freedom. So it's definitely not a good investment or a wise purchase if you're, if you don't, um, if you don't have a lot of money, let's just say that. So if you, if you have enough money to where it's, you know, you don't mind spending $1,500 a year and maybe get something cool and maybe not, then definitely it's an option for you. And if you like just getting random stuff, because you know, who doesn't, who doesn't like, uh, who doesn't like having a surprise, getting a gift and getting, you know, that's what you're paying for here. You're paying for getting a tactical goodie basket and not knowing what's in it and having the chance to weed through it and be happy for a few minutes until you go through everything and realize it's all crap. But, um, and that's from my perspective. And this is from like, a a perspective of someone who knows tactical gear very well and has, I have very high expectations. I design and produce the world's most effective edged weapons and self-defense tools. So when you have something in here that looks like a self-defense tool, or you have something in here that's one of the worst knives that you could possibly buy, then of course I'm going to be predisposed to not like that. But I feel like there's a lot of people out there that may maybe enjoy something like this because the fun factor. And then honestly, there's a lot of people that just won't know any better. There's a lot of people that, you know, who's going to, who, how many of you guys are going to be actually going to use your knife in a self-defense situation? Or how many of you guys are actually going to, and, and I do, I get comments, honestly, I get comments probably once a week about people saying bone breaker saved my life or something like that. I mean, which is amazing to me. Um, but it's still a tiny percentage, right? We sell thousands of, of, of knives and tools and, and how many people have they actually helped save their life or protect a loved one? It, most people don't have to use them. So a big part of it is just buying it for the cool factor. And does it have cool factor? I feel like this backpack, if you think it's cool, then it's cool. If you want to go, you know, hang out with your friends and all of you guys have Molly backpacks and you, or you're airsofting or, you know, whatever, like tactical role-playing of any kind, this is really cool stuff. And then it's stuff that you, you may not have had time to do the research on. Like I'm in the industry designing and producing stuff. I keep up with, you know, stuff like this, right? What's I, cause I'm, if I'm going to introduce a backpack, I need to know what's the best, why is it the best? What do people need? If it's in a tactical community, what's, what, what fits the needs of the community? So therefore I have to know what the products are out there to see if there's a gap and then design a product that is not out there. So that's why, you know, um, and it all came around personally in my situation for me having to use this stuff, me being, you know, in third world countries or in other places around the world where I didn't have the luxury to be picked out or become a target where I had to use gray man theory to survive, where I had to 
escape and evade. So that's how I learned what things I needed for escape and evasion. So when somebody tells me that this is a survival kit, there are things, let's say that this, for example, is a, is a, a hammock. This is actually great. They're cheap, but they are awesome for, this is a really low quality cord that it comes with. It's not paracord. So it always bothers me when, why don't you just use 550 cord? If you're going to send a little bundle of cord like this, this stuff is like 50 or 100 pounds strength, whatever the breaking strength is, maybe a couple hundred pounds max. Why not just include 550 cord? Like all of my bug out bags, anything that I per do, even used to sell a lot of my knives with paracord wrap because the cordage is so important. So why would you include, this is a nice heavy duty nylon strap, but when I see a, a, a cord come that's the same size and shape as paracord, but it's a cheap knockoff that's not paracord, that's not 550 cord, it just, it's like, why? Save a couple bucks? That's the difference I guess you got to look for. You got to look for if people are trying to do it to, to make something awesome, or are you trying to produce it to just make money? So this, this comes also with, this is a heavy duty nylon cord, and this is over 550 pounds for sure, as long as it's got the strands on the inside like it should. But this is a heavy duty cord, that's good. So there is a little bit, about maybe a few feet of it, but it might be enough. And I'm noticing that this is a hammock for sure. And there's, this is the one that has the bug netting. So if you're in a jungle environment, this could be a lifesaver. Another great thing about this in particular is that the colorway is naturally a natural, almost camouflage. It's a, it's a earth tone, so it's great for camouflage. So there are some really good things. This would be something that I would like to have for survival. They're not that comfortable to sleep in. I don't know how many of, how many of you guys have slept in a hammock. They're... Um, I did it a, a lot as a younger man, a lot, and I loved it and it never bothered me, but yeah, I think you get a certain age where you just don't want to sleep at a hammock anymore, but so I would, it's not something I would use, but, uh, but for sure it's, it's an, as far as survival goes, they're amazing because you can throw this in a, in a bug out bag and the size and the weight, which this is a little heavier than an Eno, uh, and a little bigger, but it's definitely usable and it's cool. So the Enos are hard to find in, in the like colorway like this in a natural color. So it's got pluses and advantages. Um, if I had to pick one thing that was like the best out of this whole thing, I'd probably say that it would be this. Let's see. Or the Olight pistol light. If you carry a pistol, it's cool to have that Olight pistol light. Um, I would say the, the Gerber knife is probably the worst. It's uh, going in the trash. But um, this Bastion knife is pretty cool. I, I was pleasantly surprised because when I opened it, I was like, oh, China. And then I was like, wait a second. It's fit and finish is good. It's got a good grind. I wouldn't say the fit and finish. Excuse me. The, the fit and finish for the working fit and finish. I The only thing I didn't really like, the handle scale just looks kind of cheap and gimmicky. But... It's a great design. It's light. It's got a D2 blade. The locking mechanism doesn't look so bad. It's a liner lock. So, so I would say that uh, there are a couple good things in here. And you might be able to convince me that something like this could be brought to the market for a couple hundred bucks. But $400, I think, is, is insane. It's, I think it's ridiculous I, because, for example, I sell a survival bag that has like twice the survival potential as this does. And it comes with a knife. It comes with a tent. It comes with like literally two or three times more than what's here. It comes with the backpack. At pretty much everything you have on the table here, but more lights, everything. So, and mine's $300. This is $400 and mine's probably 10 times better, the, the ultimate survival bag. So I'm not really sure what the disconnect here is, but I really think that's what it is. So if you have a bunch of money and you 
don't mind spending it on whatever and you want to just receive random stuff that might be cool or might not or whatever that you like getting stuff and it's exciting to go through then then this is this is for you i did they asked me to give this review for their product and i agreed to upon receiving the product give the give a code for their website so if you want to buy something off their website it's crate uh CrateClub.com, I believe. CrateClub.com. And you can use Bone, the code Bone, for 10% off. And I also have to put a post on Instagram about this. So I will put as well put a post on Instagram. Uh, I do appreciate you guys, Crate Club, for wanting my opinion. And I hope that you guys, and if you guys want to um, improve your product a little bit, I will say I would recommend getting away from all of the China-made stuff and maybe try and include maybe one thing handmade or something from an American maker, in, in the, at least in the general box. Uh, for example, you know, the difference, just the difference in having like a handmade tool like this versus something like this, I think could be a big difference for people. And in their defense, I have to also say that I've had a ton of people that all, all these box people, there's, there's, these aren't the only ones. There's a bunch of these man box, survival box, boy box. I don't know what all the boxes are, but there's tons of boxes. And they, so many have contacted me and like, hey, we would love to get your stuff in one of our boxes. And I always tell them the same thing. I said, look, I don't have a big markup. I make this stuff by hand. You can buy it, but... I'll give you a slight discount and that's it. And they're like, oh, there's no, you know, how am I gonna, okay, well, that's why, and that's, and I understand, that's why they have this stuff in here because, you know, at the end of the day, you have to make money. So if somebody's gonna sell you a, 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 a cool guy box packed by Navy SEALs for $300, then you've gotta know that though they probably paid 50 bucks for what's in there. So, and, and, and that's just part of it. It's kind of a, it's marketing, right? It's it's sales. It's it's understanding, and and that's that's really the the long and short of it. I think this is we've been doing this for a good little while now. I think we've pretty much covered everything. I'm gonna try and be doing a lot of these videos, and I'll try and get some more to nomadic Slovak mentioned that you should. Uh, not forget to hit the like button on this video. Thanks, buddy. Hit the like button. Thanks for checking in. And uh, T. Johnson said that we need to do a bone box. So it would be cool to do a bone box, but that's the thing. So let's say, for example, that I took just this stuff on the wall and did a bone box. It would be like $50,000 a year subscription. So... <laughs> So, you get what you pay for, guys. If you want the 1500 subscription, here. If you want the 50000 holler at me. I'll do a bone box for you. But <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll do some questions and answers on the next video. And I'm really going to try and do some more live videos for you guys. Like and smash that like button. Hit the subscribe, all that stuff and click the bell so you get my notifications. Let me know what you think about the video and let me know if you think the Crate Club is a good deal. Thanks for watching.